Look at that little butterfly friend. Fresh growth. You could almost call it regrowth. Welcome back, everybody. We live in exciting times because, thanks to our new pure daisy, we are just about to get really started on Batania. With that and some living rock and some more living wood that I prepared beforehand, it is finally time to get into this, and I think I'll pick living wood. Now it wants us to build a Horn of the Wild, which helps with grass harvesting, or it wants us to build our first Day Blooms. Day Blooms in this pack, if you don't know, and I think it actually says so in the Lexica Batania. What the heck? Where did these books come from? Get out of here. I must have picked them up at some point, and this thing sucks in any books you pick up. Anyway, passive plants, which includes day blooms and hydroangias, will eventually rot over time. And yeah, it doesn't say that in there. Fictional flora, generating flora, caveats of passive generation. Passive and active. Passive flowers are those that simply create mana, using a completely free resource, such as the sun or water. Active flowers require some sort of resource to transform into mana, be it renewable or not. At the start of a botanist's career, only very basic and rudimentary passive flowers are available, like daybloom or nightshade. These flowers are required to advance on to more potent and effective active flowers, but they should not be relied upon, aside from being a stepping stone, as all passive flowers will decay into a dead bush after three days of work. What the heck? The... <sighs> so... As the good book says, we have to be very careful about when we place our flowers. Thankfully, since we have a bed, we can actually force it into being daytime, and the time that the flowers tick down is just a raw value of time. They don't actually count the days. Speaking of, it's getting dark out there. Between episodes, I crossbred some plants a little bit as well. Here you can see I have raspberries, I have cucumbers, I have chilies, which are both cucumbers and chili are both descendants of these sweet corn, so they can both crossbreed off of it. I have blackberries, snowbells, and garlic, and I also have our first couple of regular flowers, which I will be crossbreeding, trying to get us all of the dye flowers, which are the first step to getting the Batania petals. So we're making really good progress here. So, getting into Batania, we're going to have to make some day blooms. That's just yellow petals, orange petals, and light blue petals. I think it's finally properly nighttime so I can sleep. We should have all those petals around, but before we actually make the day blooms, well, I'm sure most of you have played Batania before. You know what we need to make. I, I keep saying I should put a crafting bench up here. I think it's about time I finally do that. But yes, we're going to have to create a mana spreader and a mana pool to put all the mana that we are going to generate in. Ah yes, before I forget, also, between episodes, I upgraded all of our chests into these enhanced inventory chests. These are just the first tier, so they only have the same capacity as regular chests, except they're a bit prettier. They can be dyed, they can be made of different materials. But later on, they can be upgraded. They can be given 
once we get access to metals, I can start making them bigger and bigger and bigger, and they can hold more and more and more. I've also added a couple of chests. I have organic stuff just for saplings and random bits of detrius from the farm that I don't feel like composting, because it might be useful. And I have a dedicated chest for witchery, because we're starting to get lots of witchery crops, like icy needles and garlic and such. And I know also that I'm going to encounter tons of drops from witchery. Didn't mean to do that, meant to do that. So let's put that down. And in this pack, I believe that a mana spreader is simply sideways pants of living wood plus a mystical brown petal. Yes. And also a mana pool is simply an upside down helmet of living rock. Good. Our very first mana setup is just going to be some day blooms back here feeding into this and that should make us enough mana our goal is to make enough mana to make some endo flames for that we're going to just need enough to make some mana powder which i believe is sugar or gunpowder or any other powder with a tiny, tiny bit of mana. We really don't need much. I think just one or two day blooms should do the trick. So, just to make it even, because these sky blues and, what was the other one? Orange, I think? Let's see if I remember that correctly. Yeah, two yellows, an orange, and a light blue. That should be enough to make two day blooms. And the fast way to make Batania stuff, if I get my things on straight, is first of all, you need to actually make the petals. But we put those in the right order. We make our first one. We get our Chivo. And then we can just right click with an empty hand and fix the water problems that are apparently are happening. But yeah, that is how you quickly make tons of flowers if you're just making more than just two. Let's just put these here. And yeah, that is a quest. Oh, we get more day blooms. Excellent. Mm hmm. 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 Shoot. There goes the Spanish moss. Damn. Hmm. Oh well. well. We'll get more. Mutandus is easier to make later on. There's another recipe for it. And also we have stuff to make it now okay so yeah we got the quest for making a sp we get yet more day blooms and some hydro anges i i guess <laughs> i guess they really wanted to make sure that oh. normally if you place day blooms next to each other they spark up and they become inefficient but this appears to be working fine so i guess that since day blooms were made temporary, they got a little bit of a buff in that we can pack them in. That's good to know. I actually learned something today. These hydrangeas I'll just keep off to the side. All right. And also it wanted us to make some compost. Yeah, that's really easily done. Infestation spores. And also, we need to make our first essence seeds. And that'll give us an ender pearl, which will help out. Yes. Yes. Things are progressing nicely.
I should also make a wand of the forest. What color do I want my wand to be? I think just lime green. <laughs> wand of the forest, of course, allows us to actually see how much mana we have in there. These mana pools hold something like, I think, a thousand mana bursts from this baseline pool's worth of mana. So, yeah, that's just a tiny sliver in there. But it is probably enough to actually make mana powder. I could also, if I wanted to, use this staff to just rebind things, but I'm not doing a tutorial. I'm sure you all know how to use Batania. If you aren't, just ask. But yeah, let me tick in my organic stuff. Let me see if I can make some mana powder yet. Just sugar should do. It is a powder. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's end of flames sorted because we can just spend this. Well, it's used for all sorts of runes, of course. Ah, but I should just go back to Petal Apothecary. Two brown, a red, and a gray. So two brown, a red, and... Was that light gray, or was it... Light gray. Yes, you must be very sure to check these things. Two mana powder. Fill and okay, we are officially out of the danger zone of Batania. Once these day blooms all die off, we will still have a source of mana. Endo flames are kind of Batania furnaces. They convert burnables into mana. I think down here in my stoves, I have a couple of pieces of charcoal I could use. I'm not sure what their actual burn rate is. I think it might be twice the rate of a furnace. And they don't accept anything that leaves behind a byproduct, so you can't just toss them a bucket full of lava. Although... I think fire clay buckets disappear even if you use them in a furnace. Hmm. Maybe I could... Well, that would be expensive, because I would be essentially converting clay into mana then. But yeah, you can see that just those two endoflames have pretty much doubled up the rate, so they're about equivalent of all of these day blooms. Active flowers are a heck of a lot more effective. Of course, because they are active flowers, we do have to feed them, but that is easy enough to automate, and Batania even gives us a couple of tools to achieve that with. That'll come later, of course, though. Right now, I just need to build up some mana, and what's the next quest? Well, I need to make mana seeds, I need to make a Horn of the Wild, and I need to make mycelium. And it's good to see the quest book has given me tons of floral fertilizer in case I need more petals of a specific color. Although, very shortly, I will be to the point where that will no longer be a problem. Do I have any just plain old wheat? Because I believe essence seeds only want wheat seeds. It would be in organic stuff. Chests are labeled for a reason. Sorry for all the opening and closing drawers in your face. But I am a little bit scatterbrained. And I'm not used to having an audience still. It is a lot of fun to talk to you, though. Right now it kind of feels like a video journal, because I still haven't edited and put up the first episode, but that'll change. Here we go. With this, we officially enter the era of magical crops. 
essence seeds. That's a, oh, we need the dust. Yes, these seeds will grow essence dust. Essence dust is kind of the backbone of the entire mod. On its own, it can't really do much. The most it can do is it can convert a mana pearl into a weak infusion stone. Or it can be used as a recipe for this, but it can't really do anything on its own. Once you have that weak infusion stone, though, four of it can compress into a weak essence, and a weak essence is used in all sorts of these basic crops. And also, it goes into regular essence. So, remember, you see these as four dust, so one regular essence is essentially 16 dust. And then this is a stack of dust. And then this is four stacks of dust, and that is as high as it goes. But yeah, getting to the top tier essence, each one requires four stacks of dust. And you can see that we need multiple of it for some of these top tier seeds. So we are going to need to get these seeds very, very strong. We're going to need to get them just top of the line, and we are eventually going to need to figure out a way of automating them. And unfortunately, while they can be crossbred with sugar cane to get nature seeds, which I will eventually do, I don't think that these things can actually be bred backwards. Oh, also, take note. All magical crops specifically require tilled garden soil. It's They can't just accept farmland. If I try and put them on tilled farmland, it does not work. Oh, I think I have stronger orchids now. Excellent. So, I'm going to have to do the old square shuffle pattern that I used before, but thankfully, in my breeding grounds here, I have a space cleared for them. Almost like I planned it. Almost. I did not plan it. Okay, so we've got this thing started. We're getting nice and into the guts of Batania. Let's make a Horn of the Wild. I think I have a pasture seed somewhere. Yes, I do. And that is just that pasture seed plus some living rock, uh, living wood. And I think it's in a pattern like this. Yes. Horn of the Wild is a fun little thing to play with. I don't think it'll uproot my functional flowers, but let's get a little bit of distance away from them anyway. If I plant some grass and I use the horn on it, not only does it make a really cool sound, but it uproots all the tall grass around. It makes it really fast to harvest if it weren't for these damn extra biomes. Flowers ruining all of our fun. If we had something like an Autonomous Activator, a Horn of the Wild could also be used for automating farms, but there is an actually sanctioned Batania thing that is meant to be used for that, so it would feel like cheating to me, and I wouldn't do that anyway, even if I could. We don't have Autonomous Activators in this pack. But yeah, there is a Batania thing called a Drum of the Wild, I do believe which accepts a Mana Blast, and that will uproot all the crops around it, just like a uh, just like the Horn of the Wild. And it's even compatible with AgriCraft Crop Sticks. It will just harvest mature crops, put them all in the ground, and you can have a Hopper Hawk to pick them all up. I have automated crops that way before, but... I think in regrowth, it's better to rush for golems. And sadly, we can't get into Thomcraft until we have, I think it's infused seeds. You know, it's just infused shard seeds. And for that, we are going to need strong essence and all the runes. So we're going to have to build up our supplies a little bit. 
Once we have those, though, and once we have iron, there will be pretty much nothing holding us back from Thomcraft. Oh, excuse me, I have a quest complete. Okay. This first chapter is going pretty well. Oh, yes, also, I, I have this quest. I didn't turn in any of these quests just so I could document what I have done between episodes. I have cactus, I have pumpkin, cucumber, sweet corn, chili, blue orchid, poppy, dandelion, blackberry, melon, barley, uh, artichoke, snowbell, garlic, and raspberry seeds, all either maximized or in the process of being maximized. And I'm about to have a couple more types of flowers, if only these dandelion. Am I mistaken? I think these cross breed with dandelions. Yes, they do. They make daisies. Well, we've got the first generation of essence seeds cycled, and as such, we have enough essence powder to do this quest. It gives us an ender pearl. And its next... Its next demand is for the Natural Essence, which I'm already working on breeding over here. Nature Essence is just Essence plus Sugar Cane. Ah yes, I had an Ender Pearl in my inventory, but I also got one from the Quest Reward. I didn't know that would happen, because we have also unlocked our Batania chapter, and its first demand is to make a Runic Altar, for which it will give us more Ender Pearls. Red Tulip. Excellent. I think I can just crossbreed these off of the allium because it is almost done. It'll be triple ten in just a moment. Nature seeds. Doop. And unlike the essence seeds, these actually can be crossbred with just the sugar cane, and they can reach triple ten very, very quickly. So, before I got distracted by all the plant incest, my goal was going to be to make a runic altar. These day blooms are still going strong. So, to make a runic altar, before I get ahead of myself, we need either a mana pearl or a mana diamond, and we just surround it with a little bit of living rock. To make a mana pearl, because we don't have diamonds, we just throw this in here. And with a little bit of living rock, we have our runic altar. And that'll give us the two ender pearls that we're going to need in a, in a little bit to make ender seeds. And if I remember correctly, I think I might actually have... Yeah. Okay, I have everything. I have all the hard parts of Ender Seeds built up. Also, to use the Runic Altar, I need another spreader. Let me move these out of the way. We have a lot of magenta, and I don't think magenta is used for a lot. Let's just put it over here. So when we use this Runic Altar, the Mana Spreader will take mana out of the Mana Pool and put it into the Infusion. And that is how the Runic Altar do. Next up we could make the Clayconia by getting some clay and some uh, light gray flowers from our Floral Fertilizer. Oh, we have a... Ah, yes, because I got nature seeds. And I was right. I do get mushroom seeds as a reward. Next up, I need to make some magical fertilizer, which I don't believe is too hard. Magical fertilizer is like bone meal for magical crops. 
because regular bone meal won't work. Yeah, it just needs all three types of these, which means I need to make some more mutandus, but that's no problem, and it needs some essence of nature, so as soon as those grow, I can get that done. So, there's yet another quest line that's opened up for me. What the world is made of. This is kind of the basic magical crops, and this is where we're going to find a lot of the, uh, the metals. It's also where we can finally get skeleton soul seeds, so I can just grow my own bone meal, which will speed things up. It rewards us with an ender pearl because we're going to need to spend an ender pearl to make that basic infusion stone, and I just got enough essence dust to pull it off. So I'll use my ender, an ender pearl, throw that in, and it's just the ender pearl covered in essence dust giving us a weak infusion stone, and that should be the quest. Ah, it also wants us to make some weak essence, I imagine. And sadly, I am completely out of essence dust because those crops are still growing. All right, I have successfully made some weak essence, and as such, I have completed the quest. Yeah, I'm not gonna pick just a bunch of weak essence. Skeleton seeds all the way. Now, I have a bunch of things unlocked, including the next tier of Infusion Stone, but that's not going to be for a while. It's asking me to make a bunch of different types of seeds, and it's also giving me a quest, a repeatable quest, to turn in a bunch of floral orange powder, some essence, and some clay to get this essence of copper. Now, why would I just want Essence of Copper on its own? Well, it's because if I want to make copper seeds so I can actually grow copper, I'm going to need four of that. So in other words, I need to get myself a stack of clay balls and a stack of floral orange powder. Put that onto the infusion, into the, onto the runic altar, excuse me. And that will finally make me the means to actually grow copper. I have got a little bit of work set out ahead of me, needless be said. But that is why I've been growing these flowers downstairs. Because these simple dye flowers are going to be the gateway into these Batania Mystic Flowers, which will give me everything I need to complete all of these essence quests relatively quickly. So for example, to get Mystic Orange, I'm going to need Yellow and Red. To get Mystic Red, I'm going to need Red Tulip and Poppy Seeds. And over here I have Maximized Poppies and I have Red Tulips just one step away from being maxed out. Actually, that should have given me red already. Yeah, it's just regular garden soil. So it's only been bad luck that I haven't found these mystic red flower seeds yet. And these mystic yellows are going to be dandelion plus orange tulips. So yeah, I have more flower breeding to do, get all the baseline flowers. But... That won't be too much more work, especially not compared to everything I've already done. I figure it's about time we start setting up some bulk crops on the surface. Our first crop isn't actually going to be a magical crop or anything like that. It's going to be something to help us make more of everything. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to... Silly me. I need to till this land because I am putting down pumpkins. The thing about pumpkins is each pumpkin breaks down into four seeds. And with maxed out pumpkins, like I do have, you get four pumpkins. So each one of these will produce 16 pumpkin seeds. With 16 spaces, I will get four stacks of seeds. And in a compost bin, 
eight compostable items will give you a single compost. So with a stack of something compostable, like pumpkin seeds, I will get eight compost. In other words, every time I harvest this field and put it into these compost bins, I will get myself 32 compost. Or enough for two more fields, two more plots like these. This should make setting up my initial fields much, much faster. Which is a good thing because I finished maxing out our essence seeds. I've also got maxed out nature seeds, which I should actually move to this proper box. Mm -hmm. Here they are. And I'm working on skeleton seeds. And actually, while I'm here, I have enough room down there that I could probably Let me just get a piece of wheat to make a regular old seed. Oh, it's, of course it's in here. I think that's the second time that's gotten me. Yes, let's just get some regular old seeds to make some regular old essence seeds, which we can pair with our two ender pearls and our two mana pearls. And I believe it is just four. No, oh, well, I already have. And let's see here. Uses for mana pearls on the runic altar. Yeah, two of those, four of those. Let's make our very first magical crop. The four essence, the seed, the pearls, the other pearls. It starts to put mana into it. It will take a little mo a bit of a moment because we have a very slow spreader and there's only one pointing on there. And it will need a piece of living rock to finish it off. It isn't just runes that require that. If you look very closely, you can see the, yeah. Well, you could see that it was ticking up and changing colors. And I forgot to put this on my bar. And there we have it. Now we have all the ender pearls. Yes. Things are progressing quite nicely. I also just realized that that is a quest. I think on these I am always going to pick the essence. The um the non-specific essence, rather, because it, that gave like three quarters of it back. And later on, the level of essence we're going to need is going to be very, very expensive. Uh, by the way, the essence of Ender we get from this, eight of it will give me two Ender Pearls, or I can use it for tons of decoration. And I can use it to make these End Portal Placers, which will give me a portal into the end, or Ender Stone. And that is one of the magical crops that has more uses. Usually it's just eight or nine of them will give you some ore. And that is more or less how magical crops work. While derping around, I decided to make some magical fer fertilizer. Just filling out the quest book. Obviously, we're going to pick Mutandus. And we can use this to... Eh, no, we really can't, because I'm not going to speed up these side ones. I'm just going to use it to grow the center one. Well, we can hold on to that for later. And actually, while we have all this Mutandus on hand, let's see if we can find some witchery saplings. Those pumpkins are almost grown. Once that whole field is filled out, I'll go and scan all the seeds. And then just... Hmm. Fern. Rowan! Eh. Hmm. 
Nope. 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 Another Rowan. Why not? Nope. Uh-uh. Meh. Already have one. Why not? Eh. Well, that didn't go well. Oh, well. Okay, next up I have some essence seeds growing in our next plot. I'm getting a nice supply of compost into the magical crops chest over there. And I decided that I would turn in the materials to make a clay conia through the quest book. I went through about a stack of floral fertilizer getting all of the light gray flowers for that. And if you look in this Batania chest, these are all the petals I got from a stack of floral fertilizer. Yeah. Getting a full 64 orange petals, not to mention we're going to need a bunch of other colors too for other elements. We are going to have to get those Batania flowers up and going. Anyway, the Clayconia is a bit of a funny little beast. If I get myself some regular sand... Accidentally hit the wrong thing, I think. There we go. Yes, just make myself a little bit of sand. And I put it down near the Claconia. It all turns into clay balls. And it costs a tiny, tiny bit of uh, amount of mana. So we now have clay for days. And when it comes time to doing this quest, the clay will be no problem. The essence will be no problem, and very shortly, the floral powder won't be a problem either. Because we have, well, we have magenta flowers currently cooking. We have blue flowers almost all the way done. We have yellow flowers, which I just got and I'm trying to get my second generation on them now. Almost all of our dye flowers are done. And we have fully grown red and white flowers. And I believe that Mystic Orange is just red and yellow. So when I get another yellow, I can start just crossbreeding it with the red to get myself Mystic Orange. And once that's maximized, I can just get all the floral powder. But I think that's a good place to stop for today. Next week we have the promise of finally getting some metals into our pocket. Copper. Copper will give us the path to start on Mariculture. It'll give us the ability to start upgrading all of our chests. And it'll be the start of industry for all of us. With Copper we can also, I believe, Let's see, what does a crucible furnace cost? Let's see, it's just burnt bricks and heating components. And those, I believe, are... Yeah. Ah, so we're going to need iron before we can get into the crucible furnace part of Mariculture. So that's a little bit farther. But I believe that iron is the very next one we'll unlock after that. So, we are finally making some progress. Next episode, I will... Yeah, get us some copper. See you then.